All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you can hear me pretty good. Uh, we about to get we gonna get started with y'all. Let me check my sound. Y'all listen to that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we sound we sound good. We sound good. Well, thank you. Let me pull this back down so I can make sure I'm keeping up with y'all on this side. Well, I ho hope everything is is going good. Um, let's see. Yeah, hey, we saying this and that, but as a white Christian, I thought Jesus was dark. Okay, well, teardrop. I mean, well, you know, in Europe, they they know the truth. I mean, if you look at that black Madonna, uh, they know the truth. But you know, we we get into the message. You know, you can you can learn a thing or two, uh, 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 uh today. You you learn a little bit. It's good. Listen, uh, uh people like teardrop here, um. It's good you get some education. Let me tell you why. Make sure you put on my watch. I can watch my time. You live, you're going to be living in a changing world, Teardrop. And that world is going to be more darker. And I'm not mean dark as in evil. I mean dark as in it's going to be more people on the earth than your current group of people uh, running things. Um, I just saw a report that it says by Gen Z that um, the European European Americans are the minority in Gen Z, and that's already been predicted ahead of time. Even globally, uh, the African population is going to explode by 2050 um, as well. Um, African population has been the only population that has not had a dip. The Asian population has had a dip. The Caucasian population has had a dip uh, for sure, but not the African and not the Latin American uh, populations. Um, we going strong, uh, definitely. So it's good to get some education. It's good to be the person to say, hey, I'm not like them. I'm pleased I'm not like them. I got education. I know what's going on. I condemn my ancestors. I condemn this person. I condemn that person. Don't put me in that mess. Okay. I'm just letting you know that ahead of time. Be ahead of the curve. And, that, and I'm just giving friendly advice when I say that, you know, I'm not being mean when I say that be ahead of the curve because you know, teardrop, there's a lot of people that's going to be pretty upset. Um, you, if you read confessions of an economic hit man, read that. Read, read what happened in Latin America and why that screwed up. Then you find out what's happening in the African continent. Then you look up what's happening in the Middle East, you know, the so-called Arab world. You can look up what's happening in the, in the Asian world. Yeah, yeah. Get some education because you better get ahead of it before, before people start really looking and saying, oh, okay, you know, how that's going to go. So, you know, hey. Just no, no, no. If someone's friendly and they, they like to hear our, our program, you know, listen, we're not discriminatory. We welcome all people. We welcome all people. Well, I hope y'all had a good day. You know, today was pretty good for me. Uh, got up this morning, um, you know, went to the gym, got my, got my good workout in. I love, I love going to the gym, get my workout in because it, it, it you know, it helps you relieve your stress. You know, it, you know, you get some good uh, aggression out, especially when you're lifting the weights, you know, getting, getting your, your treadmill on, you know, now after Christmas, I'm going to go real hardcore after Christmas. Cause I got, I got a little goal I'm trying to hit. So, so I'm gonna go hardcore after Christmas. So I can hit my goal and then I ain't got to go that hardcore no more. Cause now I know how to maintain once you, you know, the thing is once you learn how to eat to maintain your weight, that's a beautiful thing. You don't gain, you don't lose, you just maintain. Oh, that's great. Cause sometimes people fight that mess. Like, Oh, I'm gaining. Oh, I'm the, it's always gain is never losing. Right. So once you figure out that little sweet spot, how to eat, what you need to do to maintain your weight, then when you hit it again, because, you know, beginning of the year or so, no, I mean, middle of the year, I dropped about 40 pounds. And then I kind of just stopped. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go drop the next set of weight I want. I'll be completely done with it, right? Because, um, you know, just 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 want to focus more on being healthy. And, uh, you know, like I say, I'm getting older, so I want to make sure I'm here a long time. I want to lay the seeds in the ground early to make sure of that. But how much? What, what time we got here? Let me let me check it out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right. Let me give. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna get started on this. Um, now I will say this much. 
I'm, I, I, I know everybody's an expert in religion and politics. I know, I know everybody know about religion and politics. This is not, this is not, um, uh, me saying I'm an expert in anything, but I look at everything through the lens of racism, and white supremacy, and we have to understand how religion in particular Christianity was used as a tool of conquering as a tool of deception to not only have our ancestors be okay with still being on a plantation. Cause see one time Dr. Claude Anderson had, has said that we shouldn't have been on the plantation that long. We should have got off of that immediately, but why didn't we do it? Because actually at one point in time, it was more black people in this country than even white folk. So why didn't we do it? Why? Well, we have to go like, listen, if you could bind the mind and put something in people's mind to believe in something even false, like, you know, like cults and things like that, then that would hold people from doing things when they have large numbers. Right. You know, now of course we know the tax they use, not only religion, they use fear. They use all these things to bind black people from not want to, you know, get free of their oppression. But as we talk about today, and as you see here on the title, then folks had to change the image of Christ for the world to accept the con. Now, the reason why I decided to do this live stream today, there was a video that I saw on TikTok, and I said, you know what? That'd be good to kind of go through this one video and a couple of images I'm gonna show you guys from some of my travels in Ethiopia to kind of back some of this up. So let's let's watch this video real quick. It's not it's not long. It won't be much of your time. Let me let me go ahead on and and cue all this up. Give me a second. Cue this up. Boom. All right. So listen what this brother has to say. He's talking about a Bible from the 15th century. The binding, book binding in Ethiopia. The cover, wooden board cover, you know, as you see. Everything is made at home. So, this is 15th century manuscripts. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, amazing that, you know, people in the 15th century, were they, uh, you know, aware of color? Oh. Now, as you can see, as that brother playing that, everybody in there is black, aren't they? Saints, even the Virgin, is painted black, you know? Today, even today, we don't have, you don't find such paintings in churches, in not always, you know, a bright color, not black color. So uh, it has to be studied very, very well, you know, this type of documents. Look, even the evangelist, this is Matthew, you know, and the harag or the decorations, all this, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um... And, and that and that was uh, the video I originally why I did this stream today, but let's 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 look at some things, right? Let, let's really look at it. Let's think about it. I want to show something else to you, real quick about that. Now, let's put this image up on the screen here. Now, this image that you're looking at on the screen, I actually took this picture while I was in Ethiopia, at uh, King Johannes's castle back in 2018. This is why it's very important to travel, ladies and gentlemen. It's important because you will never discover the truth of anything in Babylon, okay? Now, this was, you know, way back in the gap, right? And you see, you know, you have the Ethiopian king right here. You have his subjects. But look who's on their knees before this African king. Now, according to the folks, they, they brought civilization to us. You understand? They say they brought civilization to us. They said that we was in the jungle swinging, swinging around some trees with a hyena somewhere. And then when they showed up, they taught us everything we knew. But yet if, if, if they taught us everything we knew, even though we the oldest people on the planet, then why are they coming and bowing before this king here? Now, let me give you the backstory behind this picture. So they came and they said that they were missionaries. You know, that was, that was the con. We're missionaries. We just want to bring the good gospel of Jesus to the people. 
And then once they, you let them in with their missionaries, the next thing you know, they come in with their military. Now in Ethiopia, they didn't let them in. Cause they say, wait a minute, hold on. We don't need nothing about Christ. We, we already know who Christ is. We've been having the Bible way before you even got here. Matter of fact, we got with our Bible, the Ethiopian Bible got all the proper books. You redacted the Bible. Now didn't the scriptures teach don't add to or take away from the scripture. So why did they take away from it? Right? So let's, let's back some of that up. What I'm saying right now. Right? So if you, let me clear this up. This is a priest. Hold on. Put it back on the screen. This is a priest right here. Now you see, he clearly has the cross, right? So, so why, why did they, why did they want to come in there? And you notice that when Ethiopia didn't let them in, right? Ethiopia was never colonized. Every last one of them that allowed them in, they were colonized. And that, and that's how they did it. Now let's really look at this image here that they, that they, let me see, get back. Let me find this image here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get to it. Uh, where'd it go? Hold on. There we go. All right. Let's, let's look at, let's look at this image, but let me clear this up off the screen. Let's look at that image. Now this is the image that they change Christ to, even though how, how can Christ be born? And King Herod looking to kill every child two years old and under because he heard a king was born and they escaped to Egypt. Now, if this guy and his mammy would be the same color as this guy, how could you really hide in Egypt at that time? And Egypt was all black folk. How could you blend in there? How could you even survive in the Egyptian heat? We, we got to ask legitimate questions, ladies and gentlemen, just legitimate questions. If this guy's descendants cannot survive without sunblock. Okay. Can't we talking about 2023, all the technology they have, they still, it's just genetics. I, I didn't make it up. It's just genetics. So how could this guy and his mama blend in in the Egypt with the Egyptians? How without being spotted? That wouldn't even make sense. The Arabs did not overtake North Africa to what about 70, 80, somewhere around there prior to that Egypt and all that, that was all, that was all the, and actually quote unquote, Africa went all the way up into the so-called middle East. It wasn't just that little plot of land that you see if you want to know, you know, your history, right? But this guy is what was fed to the masses. This guy right here. Now, if you follow the 10 commandments, it says, do not have any graven images, right? Do not worship any idols. So we're talking about simple 10 commandments type of stuff. What did they do? Created a graven image which is this image right here. They created an idol because this is the God of white supremacy. This guy right here. See before they were gathering black folks up and enslaving them throughout the world, they went to the Catholic priest to bless the slave ships. And this is the guy that they pray to this guy. So this guy has no law. This guy is an idol. So that idol says it's okay to treat people different based on skin color. It's okay to conquer people. It's okay to, you know, wipe out groups of people. It's okay. It's okay to steal resources. That guy, that God right there says it's okay. But if that's your God that's on the screen, then that God there is Satan. It's not the Lord. Cause the law is said not to kill, steal or destroy. Did he not say that? Did he not say that? I could have sworn he, he said not to kill, steal and destroy. Right? So this image was given to the slaves in America. And sir, you remember the story about the slave Bible. 
And they said that how Exodus and all the different parts was taken out of the slave Bible. Listen, listen how wicked it is. You take out parts of the Bible, give it to the slaves, tell the slaves, this is God. And we see, we look like him. So when the Bible says, obey your masters, see, we're closer to him and we're like God. So you got to obey us. So whatever we do, it's like Christ is doing it right. And the greatest con they gave the world is that image. That image allowed them benevolence while they were committing every sin against the Lord and against his people. That image right there. I mean, look at that image. That image is a detestable image. That image is against God and his principles. Because if you were truly the people of God, you wouldn't enslave no one. If you're truly the people of God, you wouldn't be stealing the resources you're stealing now from no one. And, and let me, let me get back on the screen here. I'll take this image down here for a minute. Cause I know I'm tired of looking at it much as you tired of looking at it. So get, give me a second. Give me a second. I'm trying to roll this thing back down. Give me a second. All right. So if, if, if you really were the people of God or, or God Lee, you wouldn't have done all these things. And let's say, well, you know what? I had nothing to do with anything and you know, I didn't. Well then if you were truly godly, you will follow the scriptures that talk about recompense and making things right injustice, which is even in the Bible. Right. But you don't want to do that. You don't, you say you had nothing to do with slavery nothing to do with colonization, nothing to do with the theft of resources. Even to this day, we're not even talking about back in then we talking about 2023. You had nothing to do with it yet. You don't want to make it right. You don't want anything equal at all. You want to continue in the same system that was built off of slavery, colonization, stealing from people. You had leaders, no matter if they were in Latin America, no matter if these leaders were in Africa, Every time they want to do good by their people, you want to go and corrupt them. And if they wouldn't be corrupted, you either got a coup or you took them out literally every time. And then you put a puppet in a place that's controlled by you. And you wonder why a lot of these countries got dictators and these countries are, 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 are out of pocket. You wonder why you go in and you uh, rig their elections. So your puppet could win just like the Nigerian election. All the people was kind of excited about, uh, I think the brother name was Peter Obi, right? They had the elections. I knew some funny style stuff would go on. When I saw Stacey Abrams show up in Nigeria, I said, what is she doing in Nigeria? I never forget that video. Stacey Abrams behind was in Nigeria. Talking about she's an international observer. That's why y'all listen, in the African continent, that's why y'all don't get the leaders you want. You got to stop these so-called international observers. Y'all got enough people in your own country to do that. You don't need the Western people. Any so-called black folks that show up, you better watch them too. And make sure they're on the straight and narrow. Because the Stacey Abrams of the world and all the ones that's tied in like that, they are black faces representing white supremacy. But the reason why the world was conned is because they believe that image. And some people, unfortunately to this day, still believe that image. In Nigeria, my Lord, they got one of the biggest statues of, uh, of white Jesus out there. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's utterly embarrassing. If the government of Nigeria had any kind of uh, 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 sense or even theology, sense of just even what colonized them, they would go immediately tear that statue down. Why are you erecting an image that was used to colonize you and an image to enslave you and even steal from you to this day? The Western world is still creating calamity everywhere they go. They don't bring peace nowhere. Everywhere they go is calamity. We're going to bring democracy to Afghanistan. You didn't bring crap. It was calamity the whole 20 years you were there. 
We're going to bring democracy to Iraq. We're going to help them. It was calamity the whole time you were there. Look what Muammar the Gaddafi doing to his people. You took that man out. It's chaos in Libya. Chaos. Everywhere. It, listen, and the whole world saw you now. Now the whole world only want to hear you talk about bringing democracy to nowhere. And who say somebody wants a freaking democracy? If them people cool with a, with a kingship, that's on them. If they want democracy, I guess. If they want it, but people should have the choice to live how they want to live as long as they're not harming their neighbors or harming nobody else. But in their mind, I can do it. I can go tell you what to do. And what's happening right now, and even Sister Vicky had covered this video with, with Emmanuel Macron saying that he fears the future because the West's not going to have the voice they have. No, because it's been our preordained for the Western world to get out of the way. You see, y'all could have did very well, but you chose not to. Because to you, I got to oppress people. Listen, you've been oppressing people for a long time. And I say people, not just black folk. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. You've been oppressing people. Well, now these people are starting to, to worldly rise up against you. Now we live in the information age. Now everybody is looking at the history. You try to, so now what you're trying to do, let me take the books out of school. I don't want nobody to know the history. Well, and just, you see what I just did in this video earlier, the stream, I literally showed some history just like this. You can't hide history in the information age. So you could take the books out of school. You could burn them if you want. These books are online. A lot of times you get them for free or you get them from Amazon. See, Jeff Bezos ain't gonna, ain't gonna stop selling books. I tell you that much for y'all. He getting his money. Y'all are worried that a time is coming where nobody gonna listen to y'all. Y'all worried about the birth rates in your community. The Republicans are talking, look, Trump is even talking about trying to come up with a program where if you have some babies, they give you some money. Him and the Republicans are talking about that. Like if he get back in the office, if you have some babies, he want to pay you. Well, they've been doing that in Russia. Japan, big decline. Chi look, the Chinese, they had this stupid, what, one child policy? hurt their population. Then they upped it to two. Then now they got rid of it. Do you know the Chinese are going to Malawi, which was wow. That's interesting. Going down there to the African continent, bringing women up back to China. So these men could be with these African women. Cause they have so much of a male presence, India. That's another country, bunch of males. But then now they want to look at the African continent. Oh, African women save me. African people save us from ourselves. No. Uh-uh. And the Africans are going to start waking up too. Some of you African leaders, you ain't about worth a drop of piss, some of you. You got your people in bad situations, and a lot of it because you choose to, because you're lackeys and puppets for these Western powers. Paul B. in Cameroon. He's a freaking lap dog from for France. I can't wait for them young people to ride. I'm, I'm looking. Everybody been looking for for Cameroon to have a coup happen. Look at the countries that had the coups. Them, them brothers right there, they starting to take care of business. They making deals, and that that's what's gonna have to happen in the African continent. All these leaders that you got, that, that's you see them chummying up with the Western powers. No, no. All the lies you told in scripture saying you, you certain, you know, and I got to be careful because I'm on YouTube. So I got to say it a certain way, but all the lies you didn't told about you certain people from the Bible and all of that, all these things are being exposed. And have you noticed something else ever since people have, I noticed it with Gen X millennials and Gen Z. Have you noticed in that three group that kind of say, I ain't fooling with that church, man. That church, I'm good. Have you noticed how on cold we starting to be now? 
Have you noticed that we're, we're looking at the BS and calling out the, 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 the filth and unrighteousness that's in the world ever since we have stopped going over there with Pastor Pork Chop? Have you noticed that? I have. And the whole time the Lord been saying, I've been waiting on y'all to get away out of that deception. I've been waiting. Because it's not, them churches they got in America, I'm talking about the whole entity of it, is not following thus saith the Lord. All these preachers, no matter what color they come from, none of them are on the streets addressing the issues and problems. Now, you following Christ, you will be addressing the issues and the problems. Okay, Dr. King, he wasn't perfect by all means. But Dr. King was a preacher that got out there and addressed the issues and problems. He wasn't just in the four walls of the church. A brother like Malcolm X, he used to stay in the mosque. He was out there addressing the issues and problems in society, like you're supposed to do, whether you're from Islam or whether you're following Christianity. They, the, the work is in the streets, not the four walls of the church or the, or the mosque. That's where the people at. That, you look, read the scriptures. Christ and stay in no temple. He was out there with the people. He was traveling all the time, touching the people. But you staying in there, you getting big luxury mansions, some of you. Helicopters, private jets. To do what? You scamming. And, and listen, during the pandemic, parts of the pandemic was a blessing. Not people losing their life. But the parts of the blessing would happen. I saw these churches. They shut them churches down. And people, if they want to read the Bible, they could. They want to pray. They can watch it online. They can do it in the comfort of their home. If that's what they wanted to do. And these preachers got on there begging people to be given money during the time when people jobs were shut down. Do y'all remember that? I remember it. There was a reset after the pandemic. I'm talking about it. It was a reset with these folks in society elites. It's also has been a reset in. Just give me a quick second. Y'all give me a quick second. Uh, da, 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 let me see if I can silence something for a minute. Um, hold on, let me let me just just say something here for a minute. Give me a quick second. Hold on. Uh, 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 uh. That's that's live streaming for you, right? Oh well, she didn't hear me. All right, give me a quick second. Hello? Hey. Uh, live streaming. All right. Are you on your way? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Back to what I was saying. So it was a, 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 a reset. Even spiritually with people, there was a reset. And... If you listen to the elites, how they talking, oh, we got to get these people from working from home. We got to get them back to, to the office and to the job. And you seeing how desperate they are now. They're even trying to, in New York, trying to charge people to drive. Talking about a congestion fee. Look how desperate they're getting for money to try to squeeze the people. You know, like now these people that say they left Europe to come over here because the king was just squeezing them so much for tax. And then they end up being the same people that they so-called ran from in Europe. Right? So now they want to charge you money to drive. Tolls are everywhere. You know, pay this fee, pay that fee. Oh, you need this, you need that. You already pay taxes, but you feed to death. And this is why a lot of people have said America has gotten become so ghetto. It's been a, a reset. The reason why people are saying that now is is because they're really looking at it. They're looking at the food is crap, the water's crap, the air is crappy. They say they're the greatest place on earth. How? We don't have no order in this country. You let everybody and mama come across the southern border like it's no law. 
you clearly see the racism because you let all these people come in and give them all the resources, but the American citizens can't get nothing. Definitely black folks. You put them in a black neighborhood. I'm hearing all, listen, I'm hearing people of all communities, not just black folks, all communities, even the Hispanic community saying they don't want all them people coming in their neighborhood. They don't even want them here. Matter of fact, the people that been here already in this country, they won't give them no resources, but they give it to them, Biden and them. They literally trying to, in my opinion, destroy America as you know it. They are destroying themselves. It's not a foreign power that's, that's destroying this country or taking this country down. It's people within. It was like Rome. Rome fell within first before they were conquered. And I look at and I pay attention to all these things that's going around, right? That's why I preach and I teach for people to have three things. I preach and teach. If you're going to be in this country for a time, get registered to vote. Even if you sit it out, just be registered to vote. That way they can count you. It's a time to sit it out. It's a time to vote for something or whatever. We have wicked and corrupt politicians. All of them wicked and corrupt. All of them bought for. So it's going to take the people to shuffle the deck. Number two, have a driver's license. You got to move around. You got to have that. Number three, a U.S. passport. If for some reason something go down with these people, I want my people, whoever you are, to have the ability to move around, wherever that may be. If it's a quick place in Latin America, which is about the quickest you can get to somewhere, the Caribbean, the continent of Africa, wherever you like to be, I think you should be taking trips, making relationships with people, just in case with these people. Because this country is going down the toilet. You can't even afford, people can't even afford where they're staying anymore. These people are purposely pushing you out of the cities into the deep rural areas where they don't have so much resources, bringing in all these people from wherever they're coming from to do their work, but they won't pay you to do the work. You understand? You better be, listen, going into 2024, you better start thinking ahead and being ahead of the curve. Yes, we built America. You better believe we did, but these people never, never appreciated it. But you know what? Let's think about the real wisdom of God, the real wisdom. We saved this country so many times. We have as black Americans, we saved this country. What do we got in return? Disrespect, lynching, bombings. The most evil of evil has happened to black America. And now black America has kind of woke up and said, I'm not saving nobody no more. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not saving nobody. We worrying about ourselves. We good. And everyone is upset that we're doing that, trying to condemn us for doing what they already do. But I, and, and nobody told us to do it. We all just kind of got on code and did it because I really believe that that's, that's a God ordained thing that we're doing. Cause you know, like I say, it hit me one day, like why would God once again, reward this country with us saving them again? Every time we save them from themselves, they never treated us right. During the time of the civil war, the Confederates were whipping the union's butt. That didn't even go before the civil war, the British, Let's start there. The revolutionary war was kicked off by Christmas addicts. Not even them. They couldn't even get the British off their back. It took Christmas addicts to jump that off. They had to beg black folk to help us against the British. And they always talk about, oh, 1776, like, like they did it all by themselves. And you see all these images of them, like they would just beat the British. They could not even defeat the British without black folk. Then you go to the Civil War. The Confederates are whipping the Union's butt. 
We talking about American history. What happened? The union had to go to black men. Hey, you help us you fight the Confederates, you know, and yeah, we win. We will release y'all. Yeah. We're like, uh, we kind of heard that before the first time. That's what they told us before. And they put it right back in slavery. You, you're going to release us. That was a hard sell. And really Abraham Lincoln, what did he say? If I could save the union and keep slavery, I would do it. And if I could save the union and get rid of slavery, I would do it. So if he could have kept slavery and saved the union, he would have did it. That's why I don't look at no Abraham Lincoln as some great guy. He didn't want, oh, he freed the slaves. He said that if he could have kept it and, and saved the union, he would have did it. He's not great. He had no choice. Black folks saved them once again with the Civil War. Black folk is the one that came up with Memorial Day because they say, hey, we want to honor the Union troops and all these other things for the Civil War. Do black folks even get credit for Memorial Day? No. No, no, no. Now, Reconstruction, oh, the unions say they'll protect the black folks for 10 years. They protect them for 10 years, then they made the compromise, and then they removed the union troops from the South, and then here we go again, black folks underneath issues and problems. Every world war, black folks have fought in it. Every conflict, black folks have fought in it. And what have we gotten in return? What have we got in return? Nothing. We've served this country. We've died for this country. We lost our lives just for being black in this country. But yet we watch people come across the, 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 the border down there never did anything for America. And they literally given them everything, but the kitchen sink in black folks face. So you hear a lot of these Democrat shields say, we gotta, we gotta save democracy. What? We've never lived in a democracy as black people because democracy means you have a voice and people honor your voice and do what you say, right? We live in an authoritarian regime, not, not a democracy. Listen, the Congressional Black Caucus is an authoritarian regime. They don't listen to the people. They do whatever they want to do, or whatever the Democrats tell them to do. That's their master. They follow what their master say. So it'd be all day talking about legalizing everybody, but they won't talk about trying to do reparations for, for black Americans. Now they talking about in God, we trust, we know who they God is. That image that we talked about earlier. I don't, I, I said it before, I don't like, like them telling me about no God. I want to hear nothing about it. As long as you maintaining white supremacy, I don't want to hear nothing about God, the Lord, nothing out of your mouth, nothing. Because in one breath, you talking about God, but in the next breath, you maintaining white supremacy. So to me, no, but, but at the same time, justice is happening now. If you notice y'all, after the 400 year, after the 400 years was up. And I remember when that happened. Now the, you know what I'm talking about? The 400 years is up. I ain't got to go into it. Have y'all noticed after the 400 years has been up? Have you noticed calamity has been happening? Those of you who have an ear to hear what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Have you noticed a calamity ever since the 400 years has been up? Did it not say after that 400 years, justice is going to come and I'm going to deliver you. And have you been noticing the calamity every single year? It don't matter if there's Trump in there. It don't matter if Biden's in there. It don't matter if Trump get back in there. It's going to be a perpetual something happening all over, over and over. That's why y'all better stop with all this 
you know, some of you are kind of like the uh, the uh, Israelites in the Bible when it came to Egypt. When Moses say, hey, we got to get out of here. We got to go. We're going to go to the promised land that the Lord promises, right? There were people that didn't want to go. They'd rather stay in Egypt. And some of you, some of you are like them. Some of you are like them. You do not want to get away from Egypt. You don't want to hear no talk about it. You complain about it. You'll cry about it. You'll whine about it. But if the Lord pointed out some promised land to you, like, do you really think that your life's supposed to be consistent of fighting all day long and not resting? Think about that going into 2024. Is that, that, is that what our life's supposed to be consistent of is fighting, fighting, fighting and no rest? Think about it. You can't even go to the doctor and get some medication and you're being treated horribly. Is that, is that supposed to be normal? I mean, really think about how we live here. Is that normal? Oh, we feel we supposed to be fighting. We are fighting, but there are people that have been have fought way more than us and they, and they all dead or they rotted away in jail. Is, do you think that this is our promised land? Or do you think that every year we're seeing more and more calamity and the writings on the wall with a lot? I'm just telling those that they got an ear to hear and those that have an eye to see. It may go over a lot of people. I'm not arguing with nobody. I don't care what people say. If them people talking about they the Indians and all of that, and even those Native Americans, look at how they live in. Do you really know how they live on those reservations? They get so-called federal money. That's a finesse. Most of those people that lead those so-called Native American tribes are them folks putting a feather in their head and getting billions of dollars. The real red Native Americans are suffering on those so-called reservations. They are. They're not living it up on those reservations like that. Oh, 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 you say the, the, the immigrants, the, the, the migrants. Oh yeah. Look, y'all, I said this, all these migrants they're bringing in, they exploiting them. That, let's be real. You talk about all these people coming from the, they, they homeland. Do you take the time and go research what's going on in their homeland and really look at who caused the calamity in their homeland to the point that they feel they got to go. All, if you do the research, all of it leads back to the folks, all of it, all of it. I've done the research. I know why these people come in here, the Haitians, you know why they come in here? Because they sit up there and because their president did want to follow what they said during the pandemic. You know what I'm talking about? They got other people. We know who it is. That's how they do. They use other people to do their dirt. We know this in the African continent too. Wherever they are, they use other people to do their dirt. Take out the president of Haiti, the place going calamity. And then now Haitians say, man, I got to get out of here. Shoot. This is not cool. Let me go to America. And then when we see them all coming in, man, all the people coming to this country, why are they coming over here? Because the, because our government or even the whole Western world create calamity in these people's countries. They, they, you complain about Africans going to European countries. You complaining about Arabs going to freaking UK and all. Well, look at the calamity you caused in Syria, Yemen. You, 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 you do the things you do, but you want them people to stay in, in squalor while you take resources from these people and live it up. What you think they going to do? They coming up here to get their resources back. I'm not pro immigration, but I'm learned enough to know why they doing it. Prime example, South Africans. Let's talk about them. South Africans don't leave their country. Why? Cause South Africa, I've been there 
that's the closest thing to America you're going to get is South Africa, the closest, but it's not America. But, but the amenities you have, the way you spend your credit cards, the what you're used to, the brands you're used to, that's the closest thing you're going to get to America that's not America and that we are in the majority. That's the closest you're going to get. You can't get no more like what you're used to except South Africa. That's why I tell everybody, South Africa is a good country for you to start in because everybody will do good with culture shock. Some people do good with it, but a lot of us can't, a lot of us never left our neighborhoods, our states. So we don't want nothing too bad. Like, Oh God, like that. No, that's why I really, I've said it before black Americans. If you're going to go to the African continent, South Africa need to be the start. And, you know, speaking of that, you know, we got a trip coming up in April. Make sure you go. I know as of right now, it's uh, 16 people trying to get 30 to go. Um, so, excuse me. So we have some spots left still. Go ahead and put down your down payment. You can pay payments. I believe you you should go. If you're going to go Johannesburg, which is my favorite city. Johannesburg is one of my favorite cities. It is a lot of black excellence in Johannesburg. And then we'll be going to Durban this time, right? Last time went to Cape Town. So we're going to Durban, something different. So even if you went last time, you can go somewhere different this time. And they got some new spots that say they want to take you because a lot of things have been built, developed, et cetera, right? Um, I told them, so yeah, definitely make sure they go to the apartheid museum. Because last time, the apartheid museum was closed um, because, you know, the pandemic and stuff like that. But now I think things have opened back up with all of that, right? With everybody back to normal. But just like I teach my children, right? Me and my daughter had that conversation all the time about this country. Like my daughter, my, my, one of my daughters, I remember when I was her age, she's 21. I remember that I could go move. My, leave, I left my mama and dad in them house. And I can get an apartment, one bedroom for like $300 a month, one bedroom. Could you couldn't wait to, you know, you finish school, go move and get your own spot. You can go work a job. Even if you work a Walmart job, you can afford your rent. You can afford your car note. You can afford everything off of a Walmart job. Even a McDonald's job. This place had literally choked out the young people. And that's why they are so upset. And, you, and, and really, you know who did it? Them doggone boomers and silent generation. They hold all the wealth in America. They hold it. And they're holding on to it. They're not even giving, dispersing it. They hold on to power. They hold on to everything. They literally ruined America because when they grew up, they can have one house, one income, wife don't have to work, send kids to college off of that one income, have 10, 12 cheering if you want, off of one income, one, not having your wife out there slaving, just one. That's what they got to enjoy. Our kids can't even enjoy that. They have to be in a roommate or they staying with parents. Look at one point in time, staying with parents used to be a stigma at one point in time. It used to be a big stigma because hey, you live with your mammy, especially as a guy, you living with your mama. Hey, you ain't getting no girl or no girl. You live with your mama. I ain't dating you. And so you want to, as a dude, you really want to get her to get your spot. Cause you didn't want no girl to say you live with your mama. Oh no, man. But now that stigma has been taken away. Cause these kids can't afford three times to rent. I'm hearing even in, even in, in, in New York, in places that's supposed to be low income areas, charging $1,800 a month for one bedroom. Are you crazy? Oh, y'all crazy. But then when my daughters, when they went to South Africa and we were seeing how much it would cost to get an apartment, that's like back when I was a kid again, you can get an apartment for $400 a month, our money, $400 in a nice area. And my daughter's like, Ooh, you know what? Shoot. I'm really thinking about it. That's what she said at the time. Cause you know, she, she works with, you know, with us here and she don't have to be in the States. She say, "Whoa, I'm really thinking about this because like, I can't even get an apartment like this in, in in the U.S. And that's why a lot of people you see in every day like moving around because you it, they literally pricing out, they literally trying to destroy the middle class in this country. 
And it don't matter if it's Democrats or Republicans. It don't matter. They all doing it. And, and listen, I have never seen so many videos, y'all, of them folks crying. I've seen them folks on the internet crying constantly, saying they got jobs, making six figures, and they not making it. They pay all their bills. Oh, they crying. I mean, I, I, I mean, I feel for them, but they crying. I'm like, oh, we've been dealing with that our whole life. But they crying. What, what do we do? Oh, my God. I'm like, y'all was in charge. Y'all was in charge. We didn't do it. You can't put it on the black man and woman. Y'all people did it. Don't come tell us nothing. Just like the Asian community with that affirmative action thing. Oh, now they seeing that they messed up. Don't come tell it. We've been trying to tell all y'all everything. You, you never want to listen to the black man and woman. So have at it. I don't really feel sorry for them when they cry because we've been crying forever, forever. And nobody listened to us cry. Nobody felt bad for us. What did they tell us? And we were crying the same tears they're crying right now because they can't make it. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Stop being lazy. Get a job. Work more. All you want to do is just work your regular hours and no overtime. Work overtime so you can pay your bills. Right? You see how that don't really work? And some of you are working overtime and you're still not making it. You see? But, we, but, but, but you had no problem telling us that, right? See, Nor Norma X, there you go. Norma X says, have multiple places to live, one in the divided states, one outside. Right, 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 right. There you go. Let me tell you something. More and more people are suffering with stress and insomnia today than ever in this country. P that's why people are taking all kinds of drugs and melatonin and, you know, this is why they want to put it. This is why they want to legalize, you know, uh, uh, marijuana and all that stuff, because this, this country has gotten so much where you can't have peace. Listen, people can't sleep because they don't have peace. I'm listen, all y'all, anybody in the chat, press a one. If you agree with me that travel, when you leave the United States, it don't matter where you go, pick a place. When you leave this country, do you sleep better? And are you more at peace? Or when you leave this country, you feel the same. Let me know. Press a one if you agree that you're more at peace when you have left on vacation or whatever. Or two, it was the same. I, I would like to know. Whoever traveled. I, I just want to see that. And those of you in the chat, I want you to look at what the people are saying, not what Philip is saying. You see all the ones? Look all the ones. So I can't be lying when I get that many people pressing one. Look at there. It's uh, feet say it said more better when he was deployed in the military. He say he went to Japan. They say it was a relief. Always sleep better. Nubian cutie says. Um look, look at there. Say it depends where you go. Well, I don't know why would you go anywhere that you can't be at peace. Sleep, eat, breathe, everything better. True. True, true. Everybody saying it, y'all. Everybody saying it. Oh, here, here, here we go. Here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Let's deal with that. I guess response to travel. White supremacist racism is everywhere. No, it's not. Only person, only thing that's omnipresent is God. Racism isn't everywhere. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because if, if we were treated the way we treated in this country, wherever we go, I would tell you, no, it don't matter where we go, man. We treat the same. Why are everybody pressing all those ones then? Man, let me tell you something. I've gotten more respect as a black American outside this country than me in it. Everybody respects black Americans. Matter of fact, we get more respect than even Africans do. So much so that some Africans trying to mimic our accent when they go to different places to 
deceive those people to think they're black American because we get respect. They don't get the respect, but we get it. That's why when you go different places to speak, they hear the American accent. Oh, you black American. And they just want to start talking to you and asking you questions. And they get so excited to talk to you. It, it don't matter if it's an African country. It don't matter if it's, it's a, a, a outside of that. It could be Latin America. It could be whoever. We get a lot of respect. Why? We fought. We, I mean, people see our culture. They respect our culture. We get way more respect. So what are you talking about? We get no respect like Rodney Dangerfield. No respect at all in America. You say you, you were new into Nigeria, got some got respect. Man, every country I've ever been to, I got respect. Nobody disrespected me. Ron Rico say he couldn't stand to come back. That's how I felt a fair fr- well, I always feel that, but I really felt that big time. The first time I went to Ethiopia, I didn't want to come back here. I had called my wife on the phone and said, I don't want to come back. She said, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. What you mean you don't want to come back? I didn't want to come back. I did not want to come back here. I was finally at peace. At peace. I did not want to come back. Well, you know, nappy, I don't care what they, how they feel. That's the last people I'm worried about. Y'all. I don't even like to eat meat in America. I, I go eat all kind of meat overseas and it'll make you feel like, Oh my God, I ate ugh, like that. You know, it just, I don't know. The dietary restrictions are different. And, and I'm just trying to tell you, just go somewhere. Even if you go to Latin America, it don't cost much to go place in Latin America. You know, if you say, okay, well, I can't really go to the continent, at least right now, but I, I say the continent, or at minimum the Caribbean, but you know me, I'm a continent guy. I love the continent, and, and that's why I, I like to be. But I go to Latin American countries, no issue, no problem. I'll go, spend some time, and come on, you know, do what I got to do. Would I live in Latin America? No. Mm-mm, that's not me. Maybe I can live on an island somewhere, maybe in Aruba or, you know, but I don't want to be anywhere where a hurricane hit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be nowhere near the hurricanes. I can't stand a hurricane. Mm-mm. And living on them islands, you you susceptible to it. I think Aruba don't get them too much at all, just where they positioned. But the rest of them, mm-mm, no, no, no. Look, Cat V, everyone talks about the U.S. where thousands are coming by the day. Yeah, because they don't know no better. That's why. Listen, we're sitting up there. These people go come here and they're going to realize the same thing. I can't afford to stay anywhere unless we stay 20 to a house. Just because these people come and don't, they, they're not educated on anything and they're giving them money to stay places. Hell, if the government gave me $9,000 or $15,000 a month for some freaking rent, I'll be cool. You be cool. You're not giving crap. They sucking them in to come do their, their low skill label jobs. But they're going to find out the hard way that groceries is high, higher than their homeland where they come from. Well, why, why, do y'all, why do y'all talk like that? You know what's going on in this country. Those people don't. And they mind, oh, I can go to America and make a lot of money. Yeah, and they're going to take your money too. Just as much as you make it, they're going to take it. Yeah, see, the normal ex say they don't know. So I see them NYC angry and bummed out and tricking. Yeah, they out there tricking to try to make some money because they thought, oh, New York City, I can make some money. Man, listen, I haven't been to New York since all the migrants showed up, but, the, the, but New York wasn't looking good last time I went. New York always got this dirty issue. I'm sorry, even Manhattan is dirty. Let me tell you one place I really like and it's really clean downtown Chicago. I'd rather be in downtown Chicago any day than New York city in, in Manhattan. No, 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 man. They, downtown Chicago is so clean. Go, go down to the downtown Chicago. You see what I'm talking about? It is so clean. Okay. Indigo Lotus says safety feels weird when you feel, when you feel danger all of your life. I felt that changing planes and Addis Ababa to Accra. Yeah. Obey the commandments. Now, I agree with that. You should obey the commandments. 
a part of even how I run my life and my business is following the commandments. Listen, the commandments is universal law. It don't matter what this man say. It's universal law. And God will bless you and give you favor if you follow his laws. But also that same scripture has said the earth is the Lord's right and the fullness thereof. So meaning since the earth is the Lord's doesn't mean I'm held to a geographical location. Is it many times in scripture, God, it says, gather your family and your animals and go to this land over here that I'm going to bless you with. That's the scripture, right? So did the scripture teach? I am the Lord. I change not. So it may be, it may be that God don't want this place comfortable for us because he don't really, he don't have us being in this location. A lot of blood had been spilled here. Millions upon millions of people have died here. And all that innocent blood, didn't that the scriptures teach that innocent blood cries out from the ground to the Lord for vengeance? How could this land really be truly blessed and all the innocent blood that's been shed? Y'all look at George Floyd. There's a lot of people that have been innocently taking their life. Or if not take their life, you took their life by throwing them in prison. How many brothers lose 30, 40 years of their life for things they didn't even do? And these people know they didn't do nothing. And they still put those brothers in jail or sisters in jail. They got to pay for that, man. Why, why would God bless this place with, with like it, like it, it should be blessed? Why should he? Did, didn't they say that this country loses $5 trillion a year due to racist practices against black Americans? They could be having $5 trillion more a year. If they wouldn't be so freaking racist. More money. They are that committed to anti-black racism. Why would God bless this place that, that, that oppresses and harms his children? Y'all let us start thinking going into 2024. So I told y'all before, I say this for so long to you, but I'm going to make sure my family good. And y'all can, I'm like, look, y'all can do what you want to do. And I, I got to be at peace. I'm not going to be dealing with these people all my whole life. I told y'all that to me, life is about peace. It's not about sitting up here all your life being stressed out with people that they don't want stress. They don't want peace. That's on them. I look for peace. I look for tranquility. My people dying early deaths behind this stuff. You never have no peace. You eat yourself to death. You drink yourself to death. You smoke yourself to death. You stress yourself out. You're working. Like that sister said, you're working until you're dead. That Jamaican sister, I'll never forget that video. And she was an immigrant coming here to the person earlier. Say they keep coming here. Yeah. They don't know what they're getting into. That's a bait and switch. I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to just work until I'm dead. Forget that. That's not a life. That's slavery. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go ahead and go ahead and go. I got to go get my little girl from, from school and all that stuff. And, um, thank y'all for listening and joining me today. Um, and we'll definitely, you know, I, I'll see if I got, I don't know about time tomorrow, but if I have time tomorrow, I'll join y'all on the live. If not, you know, we got more content coming. Make sure you subscribe to all our channels. Uh, you can go on the main channel there and just subscribe to everything. Make sure you download our app. I appreciate everybody download the app and join the membership on the app. Memberships on the app, support the platform. In 2024, we're trying to go to 10,000 members on our platform. That way we can be completely independent. We don't care what a social media company do. We don't care because we're independent. We can take care of everybody that we, um, that work with us, that, that produce, you know, this great program daily for you. We are a daily program. If you don't see videos in your inbox daily, come look for it. Say, Hey, what's going on? We are a daily show here daily. So look for it. If you don't see it, cause you know how they mess with the numbers or, mess with your, your feed or whatever. But thank you all for listening. We'll see you on the next one.